what is up gang thank you for checking out sledgehammer tv tonight and vince mcmahon has laid down the gauntlet in a vicious attempt to derail kofi mania on his way to wrestlemania and we had a match made for the grandest stage of them all that actually feels wrestlemania worthy even though there is not a title involved and we are going to talk about it right here and right now my name is nick nightmare and you are watching the sledgehammer wrestling show smackdown live review let's do it <laughs> Wrestling fans, thank you so much for joining me. You know, SmackDown Live did in two hours tonight what Monday Night Raw I'm sure will not be able to do over the next couple of weeks as far as generating excitement is concerned. And they've generated a lot of excitement for next week's SmackDown Live, let alone the excitement I now have for a big time matchup between the Viper Randy Orton and the phenomenal AJ Styles. On the stage of WrestleMania, it is going to be fantastic. I cannot wait to see those two go at it. But the top story tonight has got to be the evil, vile Mr. McMahon rearing his ugly 70-year-old head on tonight's episode of SmackDown Live. And the only thing he wanted to do was crush the hopes and dreams of Kofi Kingston. For some reason, Vince McMahon does not see Kofi Kingston as heavyweight championship material. This is a sentiment that I have seen echoed across social media by certain people that are in the know, certain people that are in a higher position than I am in the YouTube community. There are just some people that don't believe in Kofi Mania, and I can understand that. Because as Vince McMahon even pointed out in his little promo tonight, if it hasn't happened over the course of the last 11 years, it's probably because we didn't see that you were deserving of it. And I really, really enjoyed this entire segment, even though you can tell that the old man definitely has lost a step. You know, his delivery isn't what it was. His timing isn't what it was. But the message tonight was very clear and it was very Mr. McMahon and I was very appreciative of all the attention that they are giving to this Kofi Kingston storyline and by doing it the way that they are doing it it comes across as wow this is a real shit thing to do as Kofi Kingston but for those of you looking with eyes like we look at the product and things that we notice is that we see it for what it is right and we realize that Vince McMahon maybe having a, an actual stroke of genius and not the stroke that causes him to write Monday Night Raw within five minutes before the show goes on the air. This is actual something, actually something that might work out for the best. And it may have been accidental and it may not have been in the cards, but they are doing something right by Kofi Kingston at the moment. And the more he has to earn it, the more he has to fight for it, Think about what they did with Daniel Bryan and the Yes Movement. All they did was throw roadblocks up in front of this guy, which made every time he knocked one down even more special, With which made the whole coronation at WrestleMania even that much more of a special moment because it was earned even more so than he already deserved to have it. And I love the fact that Kofi Kingston came off as a respectful employee. And he aired his grievances without actually airing his grievances by, by pretty much stating, listen, I never complained about anything. I never complained that you put people over me. I never complained that I missed my kid losing his tooth and, and missing all his smiles from getting his money from the tooth fairy. These are actual things that he said. This is not me just ranting and raving and having my, one of my little fits. This was actually things that Kofi Kingston was bringing up to Vince McMahon. See, like, I never complained about any of these things. And I'm not even asking you to just give me a match for the championship. All I want is for you to tell me what it is you want me to do so that I can go out there and do it and show you and prove 
that I deserve to be there. It was brilliant. It was brilliantly done. And then the mad genius himself with another stroke of evil. And I don't want to call this genius because this is just too damn good. Even for Vince McMahon, he stacked the deck higher and harder than I've ever seen him stack the deck against anybody in my life. This is something that you would have thought Vince McMahon would have thrown in the way of Stone Cold Steve Austin if he was on the modern roster right now. He pretty much took everybody you would never want to be put in the ring against and put them in the ring against Kofi Kingston and he has to beat them all one right after the other gauntlet style in the same night. And we are talking about Samoa Joe. We are talking about Randy Orton. We are talking about The Bar. Like this, that alone is just astronomical for Kofi Kingston to overcome the odds. Just with them is is just something that you are not going to think is going to happen next week. Is there any way you truly can believe that Kofi Kingston is going to survive as one after the other? He has to beat all these guys and recycle Rowan. Kevin, I'm sorry, Daniel Bryan's big old muscle man in the back. My God. If he does do it, you cannot imagine the electricity that is going to flow off of SmackDown Live next week. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be a huge step in placing Kofi Kingston in that echelon where he does actually deserve to be in a WrestleMania main event. People are already invested. You can hear that crowd. You can hear how crazy it's already getting everywhere they go when Kofi Kingston's coming out. He's getting mega, mega reaction from the crowd. And everything that is going on with Kofi Kingston right now is infinitely more interesting than what they got going on with the Women's Championship and Ronda and Becky and Charlotte. They absolutely killed that in my eyes. It's just it was something that was going to be special and they just they just fizzled it out. They fizzled it out. And we'll transition to that right now since we're talking about it the 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 Becky Lynch Charlotte Flair scenario tonight. Why was that necessary? I don't want to shit on it too much. I know a lot of you guys are all excited about it. And some of you guys are hyped for it. And just love seeing these two beautiful girls out there. Charlotte Flair is looking great lately. I liked her little ensemble tonight. Becky Lynch always looking like straight fire. Can't complain about seeing them. But what did we see tonight that we haven't already seen over and over and over again? These girls came out and said the same exact thing. They say every single time we see them on camera. Every single week. Twice a week sometimes. And how many times do we have to hear this? I would have been absolutely fine if they would have just stayed off of TV this week. Or you would have filmed a little two-minute promo of them doing something backstage or some sort of a taped segment. Something else. Instead of just having Becky come out and reiterate the same old shit how they had, everything was taken away from the man. And now the man is going to re-earn everything she already earned. And they just, you know, Ronda Rousey's a crybaby and Charlotte Flair is giving everything and blah, 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 blah. All the same shit. And then you got Charlotte coming out saying, I'm the queen and the queen's greater than the man and blah, blah. And who really gave a shit? I didn't care about anything they had to say because we have heard it a million times over before. And this is just them deflating the bubble that is already overinflated. You know what I mean? It was on the verge of popping and they're just letting a little bit of air out every single time by repeating themselves over and over and over. We still got three more weeks to go. How many times are we going to see Ronda Rousey jump somebody? How many times are we going to hear this same old tired promo? We need to space some of these things apart and to make it feel more special again. And this is what I was worried about. This is exactly what I was worried about. They were going to take the one match that I was excited to see, even with the involvement of Charlotte Flair. This is a high-stakes match. This is a good match to have at a WrestleMania. This is worthy of a main event spot, I would say. Maybe for the first time ever for women, this is probably the best chance you ever have. To actually justify those statements, women's main event at WrestleMania, Ronda Rousey, Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch. But you, you're overdoing it now. Let's rein it back just a little bit. In the case of 
Randy Orton, and AJ Styles. This was just absolutely fantastic. This was my favorite moment of the night. Randy Orton comes out there, and he's got a bone to pick with AJ Styles. This is not AJ Styles' house. That was Randy Orton's whole platform. It's like, I was here building and putting bricks in this house while AJ Styles was still wrestling for 10 bucks in high school gymnasiums. This is not AJ Styles' house. This is Randy Orton's house. Now, if I'm going to be a facetious dick like I like to be, I'm going to tell them both to stick it in their ass because they're wrong. This is The Rock's show. Okay, not that I'm a big rock guy. I wasn't a big fan of The Rock in the 90s. He wasn't my guy. Probably was for many of you fans out there. But the name of the show is SmackDown. That whole entire phrase and terminology came from The Rock and the SmackDown Hotel, which was a big thing in the Attitude Era. So when they had the second show, they made it SmackDown. And what did The Rock say? He used to walk around calling it The Rock's Show. And now we got AJ Styles coming in 2015 saying this is his house. And we got Randy Orton saying it's his house. You got Paige screaming, this is my house. It's everybody's fucking house. All of a sudden, who cares whose house it is? We just want to see you guys go out in the ring and wrestle, and that is what we are going to get. The WWE has been planting the seeds for this matchup over the course of the last couple of weeks, and I have been happily expecting it. Many of you guys have heard me mention it on occasion on previous episodes of the show, and it is going to be awesome. Awesome. Randy Orton said everything he needed to say. AJ Styles came out and confronted him talking about how, you know, he earned his spot in the WWE. He wasn't just given a job because of his daddy. He didn't call up Cowboy Bob and be like, yo, daddy, oh, get me a job at the WWE like Randy Orton. And yeah, Randy Orton may have been the youngest ever world champion at one time. He may have been 24 years old and in the ring with greats like Ric Flair and Triple H and main eventing pay-per-view after pay-per-view and headlining WrestleMania and winning Royal Rumbles. But everything he has was essentially handed to him by the WWE because of his blood. And then you got Randy Orton firing back at AJ Styles talking about his career and that it took him so long to get here, probably because he's not really that good to begin with, and Randy Orton will never see him on the same level. He was on a beach taking sun with Dixie Carter in Florida while he was main event in WrestleMania. This was fantastic. This was really, really well done, and it's already got you hyped to see what is going to go down between these two guys at WrestleMania. I was already excited for it before this promo, and this promo, I was worried about it when it, when it began, but it definitely did not let me down. And AJ Styles and Randy Orton, you could not get two better guys on the mic. Everything about this segment was great was great and got me hyped for WrestleMania. And that did not happen very much last night outside of maybe Dave Batista spitting all over the place at Triple H. That got me a little bit excited on the Raw side of things, but this match is going to be a barn burner and I cannot wait. We had a nice little stare down between the two, looking at the WrestleMania sign, pointing at the WrestleMania sign. Randy Orton just walks off. There was no physicality. And it was fucking great. And I loved every minute of it. This, like I said, this was SmackDown Tag Team Appreciation Night. I don't know if it was uh, Teddy Long's anniversary. Maybe it was Teddy Long Appreciation Night. But almost every single match on the card, with the exception of the women's division, was a tag team match tonight. Let's talk about the women's division again for a second. Which was, again... My, my problem with this is, hey, great, we got to see Asuka, but at the, at the end of the day, even though Asuka won this matchup, this segment was not centered or focused on or about Asuka. This was about Mandy Rose and, uh, what's her name there, Sonya Deville, which is something that we all could see coming a mile away after what happened at the pay-per-view past, this past Sunday. And obviously Mandy Rose is not going to be very helpful to Sonya Deville. Why Sonya Deville is even getting a match 
with the champion. I don't care if the title is on the line or not. Just It's just ridiculous. She's obviously just trying to make up for her blunder with Mandy Rose. How are you going to make up for that by having a match for yourself? Why didn't you get your buddy a rematch and say, you know what, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be out there at ringside. I'm going to let you go out there and do your thing. Here you go. I'm sorry. No, but instead, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to try to beat her. That's how I'm going to apologize to you, Mandy. I don't see that as an apology very much. But this match was unnecessary, unneeded, and it was all for Mandy Rose to walk away from a beaten down Sonya Deville as she was defeated by the champion of SmackDown Live for the women, Asuka. Who knows what they have <laughs> planned for her at WrestleMania. Obviously, it's nothing at the moment since right now we are more worried about what's going on with Mandy and Sonya. So that was a very inconsequential moment of the night. Not that it was... And, you know, it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but there was definitely much better things they could have done with these girls. And backstage, we've seen the Iconics. The Iconics are throwing their name in the hat for the Women's Tag Team Championship belts that are currently around the waist of Sasha Banks and Bailey. And I say, yes! I say, bring it! I don't care how you feel about the Iconics one way or the other. You might think they're fucking great. You might think they're the worst thing in the world since Dana Brooke, or you might fall somewhere in the middle like I do and still am waiting for them to truly prove themselves. I know that they are capable. I just need them to elevate themselves in the ring and be more than just an annoying couple of microphone hogs in the meantime. And this is a good step in that direction. They're calling out the champions, and I'll take anybody, anybody, over seeing them on Monday Night Raw anymore. I would love to see them on SmackDown Live. It would be a change of pace and get them far away from that Samoan Steakhouse duo. I don't want to see that shit anymore. Awful. And then we had the... Um, hang on one second here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Sorry about that. I just lost my spot in the notes. Let's talk about what opened up the show tonight. We had the first tag team matchup of the evening as far as matches go. Alistair Black and Ricochet and the Hardys versus Rusev Nakamura and the Bar. An eight-man tag team action. They wanted to call this a dream match. Who's ever having dream matches about eight-man tags unless we're talking about the Survivor Series? Right? This was not a dream match. A dream pairing. How long have Alistair Black and Ricochet been a duo that we've been clamoring at the bits to see them paired with the Hardys? Oh, this is going to be fucking great! The two of the greatest tag teams ever made into a four-man tag. This is a dream match! Who's dreaming about this? Are you dreaming about shit like this? You need to go see a psychiatrist and have your dreams analyzed because they're more like nightmares if you ask me and you're thinking they're dreams. And who knows nightmares better than I do? Nobody. Rusev Rus and Shinsuke versus the ball. These guys were just tearing each other apart a couple of weeks back, and now they're a dream team. Dream team duo of duos. <laughs> no. This match had a little bit too much time. I just wasn't interested. It wasn't a bad match. I just didn't see the point. There were no ramifications. There was nothing behind this matchup. The old, m most interesting thing about this matchup was the fact that the New Day came out and just turned this matchup into nothing, which actually made it mean even less because we didn't even have a winning team at the end. We had the New Day just come out, have this end up being a no contest, and away we went. Away we went into the rest of the show. The most, Another interesting thing, more interesting than any of this, was the Usos coming out, pretty much laying the smack down on the whole entire tag team division, calling everybody out, making reference to the Hardys, probably being one of the only tag teams they haven't definitively beaten as champions and need to do so in order to cement their legacy. I think that would be a great match, the Usos versus the Hardys for the championships anywhere in the world on any show is a great match for the tag team division and i'm down with that since day one the one thing i don't understand is why the usos came walking down these smoky stairs to talk to the cameraman and then went back up the stairs 
Like, if I'm filming that segment, or if I'm in charge of that segment, they're going to be walking down the stairs and, oh, there's this cameraman. Yeah, we're going to say what we got to say, oos. We're going to do what we got to do in this smoke, oos. And then we're just going to continue walking past the camera because it's kind of unnatural for us to come walking down the stairs, say what we got to say at the bottom step, and then just go, yeah, let's go back up these stairs because what was upstairs was much more interesting. <laughs> it just made the segment a little silly to me. They could have at least walked away from the camera. You want to keep them in camera view. They could have walked around the stairway and walked off into the smoke, into the distance, much more ominously. But we're going to walk down the stairs. We're going to say what we got to say, and we're going to go back upstairs because we had nothing else to do down here. We knew this camera guy was going to be down here. That's why we walked down here anyway. And now we're going to go back up to our dressing room and continue on with the rest of our day. Oos. That's what we're going to do, bro. If I had to, if that's the worst thing I got to complain about, then I really must be an asshole. Because I just complain about anything, right? But that's, it's just, that's how my brain works. This is what I see. It was a great promo by the Usos. But that's what I see. You guys, (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm a little bit fucking nuts, as you guys know by now. And that's why you guys keep coming back to me at the end of the day. Another tag team matchup on this night, Rey Mysterio and R-Truth versus Samoa Joe and Andrade. And this is just an extension of the Fatal 4 ways that we have gotten to see over the last couple of weeks. I don't want to complain about it too much. This was a decent tag team matchup. But my biggest complaint, and many of you guys know it's coming, is the fact that they had Samoa Joe pinned by Rey Mysterio in this matchup. I know it's a tag team match and it doesn't matter, but why would you have the champ be pinned? You got Andrade sitting there. Rey Mysterio is his rival. Why would you not have had Andrade take the pin over the champion? The United States champion, Samoa Joe, getting just pinned like he's yesterday's garbage, but he was undefeatable by three other men simultaneously in a fatal four-way matchup. But now he's getting surprise rolled up after trying to deliver an Uranagi. <laughs> it's a little bit ridiculous. Rey Mysterio and R-Truth come out with the win. Pretty good action here. Not you know Nothing too much to complain about, except the fact that it's just more of the same thing that we've been getting to see. And then by the time we get to whatever it is they're going to do at WrestleMania, this whole thing is going to be watered down. So maybe they don't really have any plans for the United States Championship at WrestleMania at all. Maybe they'll write those plans... Five minutes before WrestleMania hits the airwaves, as the WWE likes to do to us with every single show for the most part. The next tag team matchup of this night, Kevin Owens and Mustafa Ali, the weirdest tag team I have seen put together, (laughs) versus Daniel Bryan and Recycle Rowan, which was another good matchup here. And, uh, of course, you're going to get Daniel Bryan, Mustafa Ali, Kevin Owens in the ring. There's no way you're really going to have any sort of a bad night watching some wrestling going on. Rowan is just the big man out there doing his big man thing, and he would be the deciding factor in this matchup as he would get the tag to Daniel Bryan unaware by Mustafa Ali, who was inside the ring and would end up suffering that choke slam that he likes to deliver, and Rowan would get the pin for his team. Rowan and Daniel Bryan win another kind of meaningless tag team matchup on this night. All the Most of the tag team matches... Here had nothing to do with tag team divisions or were not official tag teams in the tag team division with the exception of the eight man that started this whole thing off. And that was it for the action on this night. Three tag team matchups and then that one silly little blip of a woman of a woman's match. But one of the other hot stories coming out of tonight is Shane McMahon opening the show with that ridiculous trophy in the middle of the ring. Talking about how he's the best in the world. Forcing the referee to say it over three times because he didn't say it with enough gusto. And the interesting thing about this is that I am actually enjoying this heel Shane McMahon. It was something I wasn't expecting. While I hate the babyface version of The Miz, I think babyface Shane McMahon is just as nauseating. And I guess if we are going to have to choose between the two, who would you rather see go over? You would have to... Obviously, you would want to see the McMahon be the bad guy. It's just a natural thing. McMahon equals evil bastard, right? So that's the role that Shane McMahon was playing. It's a role that he was born to play, and it was played perfectly tonight. Everything he said about The Miz during his little segment 
was fine. The fans were all over him, chanting about Kofi Kingston from the minute this show started. And all this was, was him telling the world he is the best in the world. He is tired of everybody latching on to Shane McMahon, trying to get him to elevate them to a level of success, asking him for advice, asking him to be mentors, and in the Miz's case, asking him to be the partner so that he could get what he wanted and aspire to greatness and please his father and make his daddy proud and all this stuff. And he is done with all of that and he is focusing everything on himself from this moment on. And all he is focused on right now is beating the holy hell out of the Miz. And that's what he wants to do at WrestleMania. He's ready for... Is the Miz ready for another best in the world beating Shane McMahon says and he goes on to say once he does it will feel awesome to him and while I am not really interested in this match I'm not saying it's getting me hyped I am enjoying the heel version of Shane McMahon over the happy-go-lucky I'm the even straight man Smackdown Live commissioner guy who is going to be friends with everybody it's just run its course, and I think this is the natural way to go about it. The Miz being his foil, the Miz being the good guy in the scenario, definitely is not doing this angle any favors. Honestly, and I can't even believe I'm saying it, I think it would have worked better if both of them were still aligned as heels, and maybe it was the Miz that brought Shane McMahon back to the dark side, and then you could have some sort of a duo go up against them at WrestleMania. And that would be more interesting than seeing Evil Shane versus Good Guy Miz. But now that he's got this, you know, USA TV show, and he's got baby number two on the way, and he's a proud papa himself, I guess the Miz wants to be painted in a different light. He wants to go down this baby face route, and we're going to have to go down it with him. The A-lister is going to go up against... The heir apparent to the McMahon fortune. And it's, I guess it'll be interesting since they're doing it this way. I expected it to go the opposite. I thought The Miz was turning heel. I thought George Mizanin was going to play a part in this whole thing to make The Miz beat Vince, uh, uh, Shane McMahon, maybe have Vince McMahon involved before it's all said and done. But that's not... I don't think that's where we're going with this whole thing. And I'm... Um, not excited about it, but it will at least be much more interesting with the way they laid things out. And you guys, that's pretty much SmackDown Live. I don't think I missed anything. Thank God we didn't see any Lacey Evans. Bam, 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 bam. Right? We didn't see much nonsense tonight. It was a pretty straightforward show. A much better offering then Monday Night Raw, as usual, and SmackDown Live goes off the air with all five members of that gauntlet match hitting the ring, trying to attack Kofi Kingston. But Kofi and the New Day would stand, stand strong, and SmackDown Live goes off the air with Kofi Kingston all hyped up and celebrating on the turnbuckles. And that, my friends, was SmackDown Live for Tuesday, March the 12th. 2019 on the road to WrestleMania and the blue road as usual is a much more comfortable road I don't know if it's because the show is just two hours and it's over with so quickly or if it's because they're actually putting in some effort and making things interesting how can you how can you not want to see Randy Orton versus AJ Styles at WrestleMania you want to see that over everything else that you've heard <laughs> announced more than likely it's going to be great it's going to be great. And Kofi Kingston, how and if he gets to WrestleMania, is going to be one of the biggest and hottest topics in all the professional wrestling by the time we get to the weekend of April 7th and WrestleMania April 6th, whatever it is. And it's going to be an interesting ride. And I'm definitely on Team Kofi. I have been on his side before he even knew he was on the road to WrestleMania. I happen to say, wouldn't it be interesting to see Kofi Kingston enter the Elimination Chamber and find himself on the road to WrestleMania? And that is exactly what ended up happening. And it's ended up being the hottest story in all of pro wrestling. It's got much more momentum than Becky Lynch's story, which was the hottest story in wrestling. But now it's kind of fizzling out. 
and I need them to just lay off a little bit and allow it to pick up some more organic generic heat. I just didn't care about anything they had to say tonight. Nothing progressed the story. It's exactly the same spot that we left everything. There's a, probably a bunch of other things that we could complain about if we wanted to, but overall SmackDown Live was an okay show tonight. I wasn't too happy about all of the tag team action. I wish they would have mixed it up just a little bit. It's just a way for them to get a lot of bodies on the show with minimal effort. But for the most part, I'm liking the direction that we are going on SmackDown Live. And that's your SmackDown Live review for tonight. Everybody, thank you all for being here. Don't forget to check out the sponsor, Audible. Audible has over 180,000 books that you can choose to listen to at your leisure, on the go, wherever you are, on your portable media devices. If you're home alone in your room and you want to play it on your iPad, you can do that. You want to use it on your iPhone, you can do that. On your PCs, on your smart TVs, wherever it is you can get Audible. You can get one free book by using our exclusive link just for being a fan of Sledgehammer TV, audibletrial.com slash Sledgehammer TV right now. Sign up for the 30-day free trial and get yourself a free audiobook. It could be wrestling related. It could be any sort of genre that you're interested in. Lots of science fiction titles, self-help titles, educational titles, anything that you can think of. There is a book there that will suit your needs and Audible has got it for you to listen to. AudibleTrial.com slash Sledgehammer TV right now. Cancel the 30-day free trial if you want to before the 30 days is up. And guess what? You still get to keep that free audiobook. So go check it out right now. If you have already redeemed the very same deal from somebody else somewhere over across the world, feel free to extend this link to your friends and family and anybody that you know that might enjoy the Audible service and have them check out Sledgehammer TV along the way because we are looking to get over that 1,300 subscriber mark. We are right there, and it's only going to take a couple of more of you, and I think it's going to be you because I know that you are most likely sitting here going, wow, this was a great new show, and I, I wonder what I should do now that I enjoyed Nick Nightmare and the show tonight, and I agreed with everything he had to say. Well, this is what you got to do. You got to hit that subscribe button right now. You got to ring that notification bell and become one of my sledgeheads in the in the best, fastest growing, most knowledgeable, respectful, and most fun families in all of the YouTube community, the Sledgehammer family. And we are growing strong, and all we need is for you to pledge your allegiance by hitting that subscribe button right now. Smash that thumbs up if I made you laugh once during this video. If you agreed with anything I had to say, smash that thumbs up so that everybody knows that Sledgehammer TV is the place to be when you want your wrestling news and reviews bullshit free and full of logic and truth and fun and good times and lots of hammer swinging. And don't forget to share this video with each and every one of your wrestling buddies all over the wrestling world, especially if they enjoyed tonight's episode of SmackDown Live and want to go vent about something that they enjoyed. That's what my comment section is for, and I look forward to seeing you guys down there. Don't forget to direct everybody and anybody that you know that loves pro wrestling to this show so that we can continue to infect YouTube with the power of the hammer, one viewer at a time. My name is Nick Nightmare. This is my team, Thor the Sledgehammer, the official Sledgehammer of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show and the Wrestling God of Thunder, his tag team partner from parts unknown, the world heavyweight champion of all the microphones in all the world, Mr. Blue the Snowball Microphone, and the most important member of the team, as always, is each and every one of you loyal Sledgeheads. I love every single one of you, whether you believe it or not, and you better believe it, because it's true, it's damn true. That, my friends, is going to do it. If you missed anything this weekend, from the Fast Lane review to the Fast Lane previews to our tribute to the late great King Kong Bundy, it will all be linked in the annotations up above. And don't forget to go and enjoy all of that. And when you do, smash that like button while you are there as well. That is going to do it and we are out of here and we will see you next time 
on the your new favorite wrestling show, the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, only on Sledgehammer TV, right here on YouTube.com. Boom. Boom. <laughs>